if you're like me, on Christmas Day, the last thing that you want to be doing is slaving over a hot stove. You prefer to be out there spending time with your family, your children or your friends, then this recipe is for you. It is really, really simple to make. A lot of it you can prep in the evening or you can prep early in the morning if you're lucky enough to get up before the children. And all it'll take you is 10 or 15 minutes to put it together. It is that simple. If you want to see even more really simple Christmas recipes or plant-based recipes, do subscribe to the channel. Let's get cooking. Hi, I'm Emma with Really Simple Recipes and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a really simple festive Wellington. And the ingredients that we'll be using today are some whole chestnuts, some sage, some fresh thyme. I would have preferred fresh sage as well, but unfortunately there was none available today. Um, we've got some cranberry sauce, a couple of small onions, some stuffing, some butter mushrooms, puff pastry, and your meat fry Richmond sausages. Let's get going. We'll make a start with our filling, and this is the part you can make the evening before or you can make it early in the morning and it is really simple to do. So what we have, we've got our onion all diced up, mushrooms are chopped up and diced and our chestnuts as well, we've chopped them up. Um, I've used about 10 of the roasted chestnuts. Um, I have finely diced everything because I don't want anything too big. And we're also going to warm through our Richmond sausages and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with this. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. They're not going to be sausages when I finish with them. So you'll see what I mean. Okay, so as always, I'm not an oil fan, so I'm going to be sauteing with my water. So I'm just going to put a bit of water in my pan. And get that pan warmed up. There we go. Bit noisy this is unfortunately but it does warm up really quickly okay so all we're doing with this is we just want to warm everything through and soften it up because we're going to pop it in the oven in a pastry it might not soften as much as we would like so I just want to make sure that we are going to get that softness in there okay. so we'll start by adding in your diced onion so, I'm going to just uh, put that a warm through. There you, go. you can see there how finely diced it is. And that's what you want. You want it nicely finely diced. And with it being this fine as well, it won't take long to warm through. Okay, so it's looking nice now, so it's going to go nice and see through. So we'll pop in our mushrooms in there. And we'll pop in our roasted nuts as well. Let's give that a bit of stir. Just give that a few more minutes. Loving the colours. Okay, and what we're going to do now with our sausages, while I'm waiting for that to cook, as I said, I'm not going to be keeping these as sausages. I want to use the insides of the sausages. I'm going to try and get as much of the outer casing off as possible. If I can, if not, I'm just going to mush it because they are quite. There we go. It's actually quite easily peels off. I think this is the most fiddly part, but it does, look at that, it just comes off really easily. And then we're just going to use that, put that in there. Okay, I'm just sewing for all of them. The reason I decided to use these Richmond sausages is because they've had so many good reviews from people on social media. Um, a lot of people are saying they're they taste really nice, they taste a lot like um, sausages should taste. Um, so I decided to go for these ones for that reason. 
If it is that you don't like the Richmond sausages, find an alternative sausage that you like, which you can do this with. Um, bearing in mind, some of them have got like vegetables in, so do take that into consideration, depending on what kind of flavour you like. Um, but this, you know, adapt as always to your preference and how you like it. So what I like to do here with Simple Recipes, I, I like to show you how to do things, but I also like to advise how to adapt things. Okay, so that is my sausages all decased. I'm just going to give that a stir and break it all up. As I say, you only want to do this bit for a couple of minutes. We don't want to put that meat through. We just want to give it a bit of a warm, just to make sure we do get it cooked through later on. And don't worry if it doesn't mix very well. When it's cooled down a bit, you'll be able to just use your hands just to get it all together. Okay, so that's enough me on that and all I'm going to do now is going to transfer it into a bowl get all that into that bowl let's give that another stir all together now is wait for this to cool down. Once it's cool I'll be able to make my wellington so while we're waiting for that we'll just make a start on our pastry. We are also going to be using some stuffing so make sure you've got a batch of stuffing prepped and ready to go. If you're storing this in the fridge for tomorrow or later on today just pop a bit of cling film over the top and then pop it in your fridge but make sure it's cool before you do. Okay so let's get started with the pastry. Now we're moving on to our pastry. I mentioned at the beginning that I'm going to be using puff pastry, so this is what I'm going to be using. Um, as you can see here, suitable for vegetarians and vegans. So I've had this out now for around 10-15 minutes, as recommended on the packaging before you start using it. And the good thing about this puff pastry is you've already got your greaseproof paper attached. So we just want to unroll the pastry, but leave it on that greaseproof paper. Be very careful when you're unrolling, because you don't want to damage your pastry. You can get a few cracks, but don't worry about it, it'll be absolutely fine. Okay, there we go. So that's my pastry unrolled. Before we go any further, we want to pop on our ovens. So we're going to be sticking on a gas mark fire. So that is my oven switched on. And what I'm going to do, because this is a little bit thicker than I want it, so I'm just going to give this a bit of a pin out, but we want to keep it as a rectangular shape. So we're just going to go up and down a couple of times just to make it that little bit thinner. There we go. Just thinning it out as much as we can. And then if you've got any cracks, as you can see there, they're starting to, they're starting to roll out, so that's fine. Okay, so that for me is the thickness that I'm looking for. Okay. So what we need to do now is, because we're going to be making this into a braid, we need to make some cuts so that we can braid it. So imagine your Wellington thickness about here. So what we're going to do is just cut that corner off and cut that corner off, make them as equal as you can. Okay, so I've chopped off my corners on the end. And on this side, what I'm going to do, making sure I'm trying to stay the same as that over there, I'm just going to cut a little triangle out. And I'm going to do the same here, just cut a little triangle out. Like so. And just take that out of there. 
Let's put this on the side. Okay, that's like so. And then what we're going to do, we're going to do cuts going down. So we want about an inch thick and we want them the same on both sides. So the same amount of cuts. And again, you're working towards the same line as your top and bottom. And there we go. So that is my pastry ready to go. So now I'm going to pop on our filling. I'm going to sprinkle a tiny bit of sage. Just press that down into the uh, pastry. There we go. So that's the sage. And I'm also going to get a couple of sprigs of thyme. I'm just going to get the leaves off, the, the leafy bits off. Like so. Don't matter if some of the stems fall off on there. They usually soften up quite enough for it to not affect the bake. Okay, so there we go. Some time in there. And now we're just going to pop in a layer of our meat filling. I'm going to turn this the other way around. Let's pop that in there. So with this, to make sure it's nice and moulded, it's a good idea just get your hands in there, give it a good pat, pat down. So we just want to do the bottom with the, a layer of this. Make sure we don't use too much. Okay, let's make sure it's nice and flat as well. It doesn't matter if you get some on the pastry you will be folding it around it so that's not a problem with that at all and plus it'll tighten up as well once you start wrapping with the pastry do you know what i'm just going to get my hands in there it's a lot easier there we go okay that's my first layer of my meat mixture which has got my mushrooms and my chestnuts and then I'm just going to dip it a little bit as well. Okay, so we get right to the end. There we go. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get some stuffing, and I'm going to do a layer of stuffing up the middle of the meat. I keep saying meat; it's not meat, foam meat. You squeeze it together with your hand. You can get a nice compact kind of texture with it. So it is always easier to do this bit with your hands. The thickness of this is totally up to you how much you love stuffing or not. Um, but what I'm hoping for, when we cut it open, you'll sort of see the center of the stuffing. And bearing in mind as well, we need to cover this up with the, some more of the, the rest of the sausage mixture. So we do need to make sure it's nicely tightly in there. Nice and compact. Okay, we'll tidy it up in a second. Those little bits up in a moment. I just wash my hands. Okay, so that's my stuffing layer. Make sure that you go right to the ends, as close to the end as you can. And make sure it's nice and tight. So if you've got any loose bits of stuffing around, just knock them off the pastry. So we just want to make sure that we've got the stuffing in the centre. There we go. If you've got a little bit around the edge, it's, it's not too much of a big deal. We just want to make sure we get out as much of it off as possible. And we've got it nice and tightly packed in. Okay, so now we're going to layer again with the rest of your um, Wellington filling. So your Richmond sausage and your mushrooms and that's it. Making sure to seal in that stuffing. Make sure it's nice and tight. I 
because we want it all to come together when we bake it. Make sure there's no holes in that and go. So the good thing about this, it's moulding really easy, so it shouldn't take much at all for this to stick together for you. Let's make sure we get all the way down. Seal it up as best we can. Okay, oh perfect amount of mixture this is, absolutely perfect. Make sure again at the end it's nicely tightly packed. And make sure it's as level as you can make it as well. Just don't want one side fatter than the other. We well, might. <laughs> okay, so just make sure your ends are nicely packed in. I'm feeling like it's a bit thin this end, so I'm just going to put a bit more on this end. Okay. It's looking really nice. Okay, so that is my Wellington done so far. So there is another layer to go on, and you probably guess what that is. So the next layer is your cranberry. And what we're going to do now for your top layer and your final layer is we're going to add a layer of cranberry. So let's get your back of your spoon, just spread that out. Make sure you get it all the way around. So you've got all your Christmas ingredients in here. You've got chestnut, you've got cranberry, you've got stuffing. I can't wait to smell this cooking. It smells delicious. And it's up to you as well with regards to your cranberry. If you want to use smooth, absolutely fine. If you want to use chunky, which this is chunky. Yeah, whole cranberry, which is not chunky. Um, that you can use that, or if you don't want to use cranberry at all, it's fine. You don't need to use the cranberry. I just like the cranberry as a Christmas touch. Okay, smoothing that out. Make sure you get your ends as well. Make sure you get both sides spread out. So what I'm hoping for when you cut into this, you'll get like the stuffing centre and you'll see the ruby red of the cranberry. I'm hoping all those flavours are going to work really well. There we go, that looks delicious. Okay, so it's your cranberry topping. And now we're going to start thumb bits. We're going to join it all together. So what I'm going to do first, we've got a bit of an egg glaze. So this is a, a substitute egg glaze. So it's maple syrup and soy milk. So I'm just going to paste this onto the pastry. This will just help it to stick that a little bit better. Even though I think it'll stick quite well anyway because of the um, cranberry. So I'm not going to put too much on. Okay, so that's my glaze. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this end and I'm going to stick it on first. And then you can take this end and stick that up so it's both my ends on and then I'm just going to crisscross crisscross remember that song crisscross there we go and it doesn't matter if it doesn't reach all the way to the sides because it will still stick together so let's get you nicely wrapped around this will just give it a nice touch when it's after it's baked Let's make sure it's nice and tight. Alternate, alternating the, the lines. Look at that. So it's all nice and tucked in. Holding together lovely. And just keep wrapping. Ooh. 
Make sure you know what direction you're going in. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it gets the starts to look like it's getting a bit tighter, that's fine. There we go. So for I have cut mine into 10. So it's up to you how many you want to cut yours into and how big you want to make it. But you can see there how nice that is starting to look. Crisscrossy pattern. Oh, this is not quite tight enough. As I say, just make sure you make it as tight as you can. easy this recipe is it's so easy it's a really nice Christmas dinner and it's just really easy to make it's great <laughs> what more could you ask for on Christmas Day other than an easy recipe here we go I'm nearly coming to the end now and the last two Papa. help seal the end Okay, and all we're going to do here is, if I knew where my knife was, I'm going to put it in the wash. <laughs> Not a good idea. And so we're just going to cut those ends off, like so, and we're just going to tuck them up, just to seal them off. There we go. That looks lovely. And all we're going to do now, again, with your glaze, So this should give it a nice yellow colour, a nice golden colour, just to finish that Wellington off. Mm. That is our Wellington done. So we're just going to pop this into the oven now and it'll take around 20 minutes to half an hour. And there you go, there's my Wellington fresh out of the oven. It looks glorious. Okay, so let's give this a cut open. Let's have a look what the inside is like. Pastry is nice and crumbly. Wow, look at that. How nice does that look? So you can see your cranberry, you've got your, your sausage meat with your mushrooms and your onions and your chestnut. And then in the centre, you've got your stuffing. That just looks absolutely delicious. I cannot wait to have some of this. That was so simple. And it's as simple as that. Festive Wellington. I really hope that you've enjoyed this one today and it is something that you consider making for your main at Christmas. If you have, do give me a like. And if you want to see even more really simple Christmas recipes and plant-based recipes, do subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any questions, any comments, or if there's any recipes that you're looking for for Christmas, just pop that below in the comments and I'll look forward to seeing them. Thank you for watching.